threw my knife down on the ground, I jumped up and I said, I defy you to find someone better. And then all of a sudden I said, oh, okay, sorry. Sorry, I just got a, got a little carried away. Got a little excited, you know, and then. Yeah. Uh, Hey y'all, welcome to Tea with Paul G, a talk show where we hope to inspire you to do what you love, do good for others, and have fun along the way. And speaking of fun, my guest today is a working class actor who has a career that is enviable to any actor. And especially if you happen to be an actor that is into geek culture, like me. So just to name a couple of his credits, he was Mr. Negative in the 2018 Spider-Man video game and is appearing as Red Hood in the Gotham Knights video game. As you can tell, I'm geeking out already. But Mr. Stephen O. Young, it's tea time. Hey. Yeah. Pinkies up. Pink oh, well, up. whatever you want. We can do a little toast, the cheers, the and go, pinkies up, however, yeah. And, uh, hmm, <laughs> that's good. Delightful. Yes, sir. Green tea. Green, green tea. tea. You having the green tea? Because I'm Asian. That's what I do. Right, you know, <laughs> eat the meal that's in front of you or drink the tea that's, that's in front of you. That's right. right, exactly. I had an acting teacher tell me that once. Eat the meal that's in front of you. So that's good. You know, just saying yeah. like, hey, the roles you're getting offered, take it. Yep, them. yep. I'm a firm believer in that, actually. Yeah. When people are like super picky. I, I, when I first started, I was kind of uh, always debating that. And it's like, oh, should I be like really picky about this stuff? And then I was like, nah. Beggars can't be choosers. Do what you got to do, man. We like to work. Right. Working no, class right. actors, right? You're absolutely right. right. Yeah. And that's what we want to do here is like raise that awareness that's that right. you can live a good life. Mm -hmm. You can do what you love. You can be happy. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to be flying around on a private jet. I mean, could be nice. But, you know, but my, my, my parents always said that, like, don't have the Cinderella syndrome. Uh -huh. Like, don't wait until you're the princess at the ball <laughs> to be happy, right? Yeah. And right. I always have to remind myself that, too, of like, whatever I have... You gotta yeah. be grateful for that. And then, and then more good things will happen because of your gratitude. Yes. Nobody likes a sourpuss. Nobody you likes know? a sourpuss. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you're grateful for what you have, there will be more to be grateful for, mm -hmm. you know? But if you focus on what you're lacking, mm -hmm. then you're gonna continue to lack. Absolutely. We've uh, enjoyed our tea a little bit. We've had great conversation, but I think that we should move into our next segment, Spill the Tea. So I have a couple of questions okay. for you. But do you remember how we met? Our mutual friend Barry, for sure. Yes, yes. Barry Battles, by the way. Yes, can we, Barry can we Battles. Say that? Barry Battles. We can say Barry Battles. Bay, Baytown Barry. Outlaws, director. Listen, Barry, Barry Battles yeah. has a special thanks to it in every okay. episode of this show. Yeah. Because he's actually the first person that encouraged me to do a talk show. And at the time, I wasn't interested yeah. in it. And honestly, yeah. uh, a lot of the guests that are on... Uh, I was introduced to through Barry. So there you go. Here's one of them. So that's it. Um, but let me help you out with that scenario. So this was back in the W days, all right? And I hung out with Barry all the time, you know, when he wasn't working. I heard about Steve-O <laughs> so much. You know, there was Steve-O and Steve Brown. Right. And Lynn. Also, Steve Brown is an amazing spy coordinator now you yeah. know, for, for James Cameron. And but yeah, I, so I'd heard so much about you, never met you. And then uh, one night I'm hanging out with Barry over there. And you walk, and I'm yeah. like, this is the guy. And it was like that instant thing where I'm like, well, God, this is why they're always talking about him. He's <laughs> such a likable guy. Aww. You were instantly hilarious, charming, and complimentary, Aww, you know, which flattery you. gets you everywhere. So. <laughs> no, <laughs> but... You. Well, but, you are a handsome dude. So. Well, I probably, you. I probably gave you some, some crap when I first saw you. I probably came in and was like, who is this handsome dude? Why is oh, this guy here? stop, stop. Yeah. The last time we were actually out in the social scene together... Yeah. Um, uh, there were some ladies in the bar that found you to be a handsome dude. And you didn't tell me. I'm still single. Look, there's no ring. <laughs> there's no ring. <laughs> All right, ladies. Uh, the, what's the Instagram handle? Uh, Slide into the DMs. Yeah, yeah. Stephen O. Young. It's my name. <laughs> I'm also on Hinge. So as far as spilling the tea goes, getting a little deeper into it, um, you've worked on a lot of stuff. I don't know if it's just the prevalence in pop culture or whatever, but you do have a lot of geek culture stuff on your resume. I know. Like you've I, done so much. I, I, mean, I am very blessed to be in a lot of, because I wanted to be a comic book artist when I was growing up. You know, I obviously decided, oh, I, I fell in love with martial arts. Yeah. And then I was like, I'm just going to be the next Bruce Lee. You know, that's going to be my thing. I was like, in my head, I was like, I can always draw. 
but I can't always have this beautiful face. So let me try yes, to do <laughs> let me try to do this for <laughs> while I can well, and see yeah. how that works. But yeah, like so the the work that I have done in my career has lined up pretty well like with my interests, you know, doing Star Wars stuff. Heck yeah. Doing yeah, doing the superhero stuff. The Spider-Man obviously, Gotham Knights, you know. Yeah. Batman, I love Batman. So yeah, sometimes I have to pinch myself. And then now, thankfully, I do a lot of VO for video games, yeah. things like that. And so it's it's really um, very simpatico with what I like. And I, I I don't know if I can take any credit, man. And sometimes that's just, I oh, don't know. Oh, no. It's just. You got to take partial credit, right? Yeah. I mean, because you're doing the work. You're the one who put all that prep into that uh Mr. Negative audition and speaking of Mr. Negative, are you okay talking about the audition oh. process a little bit? I, oh, if yeah. I remember correctly, it was a pretty cool story. Dude, there. I love, well, people have seen me. They, this is like <laughs> old hat. This is like my favorite story to tell. But I loved, I loved, I loved talking about that audition. Um, Let's talk about it. Yeah, so what? This is like 2016, something like that. Okay. Uh, a little journey back. I, yeah, I was really trying hard to transition out of stunt work because I had done stunts for like a decade. And all that time of doing stunts, I would I was still wanting to be an actor. Yeah. Around 2016, though, is really when I was like, 2015, 2016, I was like, okay, no, no, I have to like, I have to tell everybody I am just acting, you know? I had to say no to a lot of jobs, right? So I was in a position I was yeah. very uncomfortable. And uh, my manager got this audition for this video game. It was my first like acting video game audition. I had done mo motion capture, but I had never done like the face or the right. character, right? Or the, facial, the voice. The yeah. Facial performance. Facial capture. Included. Yeah. So not to throw you off track. But throw me quick. off track. Well, no, touching on that. So you said you knew it was a video game, but they yeah. didn't say what exactly or right. even what the role is? They did not say what. And you signed an NDA? And I signed an NDA. Yeah, and then, uh, which I... Later, I was the one that leaked it, so <laughs> But not on my, it was not my fault. Like, the, these data miners found this thing. But like, so wow. I, get this, I get this audition from my manager and uh, it's a cool scene and they don't tell you what the game is for. It's uh, this rooftop, like it's after a bank heist. It's a, it's a scene, you know, it's a dummy scene that they made just to see your range. And I had to speak Chinese in it. I also had to speak English. I had to speak with an accent. So I'm, I'm going in and out of, two languages with an accent and playing a bad guy. And they had said something that was really cool. They're like, it's a hostage situation. Yeah. And you know, we have these hostages and I'm on the phone with the cops and I'm like telling them they better back off. And then at the end, like I kill a guy and then a helicopter comes and I get on, it's super dope, right? Right. And like, like, yeah, and Good it was such moment. a, yeah. And it was such a cool scene. And they said, this character is supposed to be like uh, Jun Tao from Rush Hour. Rush Hour 1, which okay. is played by Ken Lung. He's a bad guy in Rush Hour, and okay. you know he has this cool line where he's like, he throws a napkin at a guy, he's like, wipe your face, you're bleeding, right? It's like super cool, so I was like, yeah. oh, got it. So at this time, I was like, like I said, I was transitioning into acting. Yeah. It was a very uncomfortable position for me. I was saying no to work. I really wanted this job. I really needed this job. And I think I just bombed uh, like a one-line audition like a month before that. Those are the hardest, one-liner. Yeah, well, I bombed this thing, so I was just like, no, I'm gonna get this damn role. I love that. <laughs> right. Determination. Yeah, well, and then they also, it. right, and they also said the character was obviously a martial artist, uh -huh. and it was Asian, good-looking, tall. I was like, yeah, total this stud. This has to be mine. So I was like, I attacked it like for a whole week, I just, Ooh, I was in it. And uh, I was so excited. I went to the audition. I was first. I was super early. Um, I think they were just doing it, whoever comes sure. at, at whatever time. Yeah. So I came at like, it was like 9.30 or something. I came at like 9 in the morning. I was like, there before the door even opened. Yeah, yeah right. And I was just like, I'm ready to go. I, I wore, crazy enough, I wore a suit. I wore a tie, looking like you, hey, right? Right. But I come in looking like that. Certain and, intuition. Yeah. It was is out there. It's, it's, it's a thing. You were on that right path. Yeah, when you're when you see sometimes when you see the writing, when you see the script, when you see the scene, yeah. Sometimes it subconsciously just seeps into you and you, as you say, get on the path. Yeah. So we do the audition. And by the way, yeah, you know, speaking in Chinese, speaking in English, not trying to go up on your lines when it's two different languages and a different accent is super nerve wracking. Yeah. And also when you're in a the Sony mocap studio, it's like there's soundproofing 
everywhere. And it's like a white room. It's like heaven. You walk in, it's blinding. <laughs> you don't know. And it's totally dead quiet. So you're just completely disoriented. It's like a, one of those isolation chambers, you know? And yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so, it was very, again, super uncomfortable because it's just like, what? And then there's a table with all the people, the right. lovely people from Insomniac. I love them, but at the time, it was just like a executioner's row, right? Yeah. So it's just like, it can feel like that sometimes when you yeah, walk in the room. Right. So I had this amazing uh, scene partner, Walt Gray, the fourth. It's very important. Hey, right? hey. Yeah. That is important. And he's uh, an incredible voiceover actor and a performing arts uh, motion capture guy him himself now at this point. But he was my scene partner. So I go in and it's me and him and we're doing the thing and I have to like really just be intense. So I have a knife, I have a rubber knife and I have Walt and we're doing this scene. And, you know, at the end of the scene, I have to slit his throat yeah. and then like push him down yeah. and then be like, anyone else, right? And it's just like super cool. So I do the whole thing, I'm feeling it, I'm in it. It's like when you play baseball and you hit the sweet spot, it's so rare that you can be in these auditions. But that was like one of the few auditions in my life where I was like, while I was doing it, even though everything was uncomfortable and weird and I was tense. You were was, there. Yeah, yeah, and I was in it, but like, yeah. For whatever reason, it was, we were in the pocket. Yeah. And so I finished doing the thing. I slice his neck, throw him down, anyone else? And then give it a beat, let it cut. They call cut. I threw my knife down on the ground. I jumped up and I said, I defy you to find someone better. And then all of a sudden I said, oh, okay, sorry. Sorry, I just got a, got a little carried away. Got a little excited, you know? And then, yeah. uh, but I think, they saw the duality uh -huh. of Mr. Negative, of the really evil dude and yeah. then the really nice, gentle guy, right? So I yeah. think that was it. That was my audition. Yeah, he starts off, he's all like, oh, here's a cake for Aunt May. That's and right. oh, hi, Peter. And he's That's all right. smiles yeah. and stuff. And then he just turns and like, yeah. wow, he went, yeah. he went dark. And, and, that, and that was really fun. That was really fun for me because up to that point, you know, I was doing some TV stuff. Yeah. Uh, and definitely with the stunt stuff, I was always like the one note, you know, angry Asian guy, or as I call it, guy, right? And like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like, because. and it was, <laughs> and it just, it was always like that. So this was one where it was like, oh, this is a big acting role and it was high profile and I was able to be multifaceted and be gentle and be nice and be charming and be funny. You know, and, and still show off some skills. And then, yes, and then turn into Dr. Yeah. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, and like, and like, who doesn't want to be playing a role like that? Yeah. I had the best of both worlds. So Amazing. I'm forever grateful to that role. You know, it's what I'm known for. Yeah, you dude, you, you killed it. Oh, well, thank you, you did. man. And of course, oh, you, you're, man. You're, you rightfully get the acclaim. Thank fans you. love you as the oh, character. I appreciate the fans. There was something that had you just... <laughs> the thing that I definitely took to heart was know your casting. Mm -hmm. and embrace your casting. Mm -hmm. And for me, uh, I used to, this truly, when I first started, I kind of had a chip on my shoulder because I was like, I don't want to be the Asian, I don't want to be the token Asian. Right. And I don't want to be the token Asian that knows martial arts, even though I love martial arts. Yeah. I don't want to just be the bad guy. But at a certain point, I was like, I'm really good at that. Yeah. And that's what people see me as. And there's a way I can flip some of these uh, conventions on their head or just bring something new or make it alive. Yeah. And so then I was, I actually started to lean real heavy into my casting, you know, and, and then put your twist on and it. then put my twist on it. Love it. And then I think that's where things started to kind of percolate. Yeah. So dude, I could talk to you all day, but I do want to hear some of the other things you have to say. So we're going to move on to our next segment, which is positivity. <laughs> First thing I'd like to ask you is, do you have any advice for viewers out there? Mm. Whatever advice you want to give. I have so much advice. Okay. The older I get, I really am turning into this like... Sage. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the wisdom is there, like, yes. Just life, right? Um, yeah. I think the one thing I would say is, because I'm going, I go through this every day, is like, uh, things are tough, but you never know what is around the corner. And nothing lasts forever. Nothing is good forever and nothing is bad forever. And sometimes when I'm having like really like dry, dry times and like work or, or socially or whatever, it's like, 
I'll, it's almost kind of like a, I want to say enjoyable, but I kind of separate myself and I kind of look outside and I just observe what's happening and I kind of yeah. have to laugh because I'm just like, oh, 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 this roller coaster, oh, how, how much farther can we get? Right. But then ultimately there will come a point and it always happens where you come back up. So Love it. if you just do your best, be nice. Yeah. And it's going to be hard. I guess that's what I would also say too because I'm a, I'm a realist, you know? I, I, I believe all the Instagram cliches, yeah. but there's also a part of me that's cynical that's like, well, tell me the truth. And for me, the truth is, I, I would want to hear someone say this, which is like, I, I feel, I see you, you know? Yeah. I, see, yeah. I see that things are tough. So I get that. And we're all there, but just, you never know what's around the corner. That's all I can say. Yeah. Just you do your best. Yeah, the cliches exist because there's, there's truth to it. And um, you got to have the, 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 the big picture, the, take in the full scope. And, uh, you know, you can't just go through life with just rose-colored glasses. But just know that, and it's harder sometimes than others, but no matter what you're going through, it's happening for a reason. And you're going to learn something from it. And hopefully you'll be better when you That's come right. out the end of it. So. That's right. And there's always something you can do. Yeah. So sometimes if you're hitting that brick wall, this is Sun Tzu, the art of war, right? It's okay to go around the wall sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You know? Sometimes people just want to power through, and that, that can be a thing, but you can also, there's all, we're imaginative creatures. There's all kinds of things we can do, you know? I have to go back and ask you about that pronunciation. Yeah. Do I mispronounce it? You sure do. Okay. <laughs> no, say it again because that's the first time I've ever heard it pronounced that way. Uh, Swin Tzu. That's how you say Yeah. But, wow. You know, I know it's spelled S-U-N. It's a romanization. Everybody says Sung Tzu. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, wow. just, that's just how it was written in like the 1800s, the Wade Giles method okay. or however when they started to first romanize Chinese. Another thing people don't really know about me, I'm incredibly educated. I am a huge nerd. Oh, I, d- I, didn't know you, I did know you were a smart guy. But yeah, so since, since you brought up uh, the art of war... And we've been talking about our craft and just artists in general. Mm -hmm. Uh, For those of you out there who have never picked it up, Stephen Pressfield's The War of Art. Have you read that? I have not. I think you dig it, especially like where you're at now. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I'm going to check it out. It's a fantastic read. So, Well, as far as positivity, I got two more questions for you. The next one is, what is the best advice you've ever been given? Oh. Oh. Well. It's hard, huh? Yeah. This is from... This is from my father. Ah, oh, love it. Yeah. This is the best advice I've ever been given. Whatever you want to do, whatever you feel like, whatever, whatever, ask. The worst they can say is no. Yeah. Don't be afraid to just ask. Yeah. For what you want. That is the best advice. And then the second best advice, or maybe right on the top, which has led me to the rest of my career, was what would you do for free? That's okay. what you should try to do as your profession. And if not your profession, then you should certainly be doing that in your life. I love that. All from my father. Yeah. Man, that, is, that yeah. is exactly what we're about here, mm-hmm. right? Do what you love. And so I have one more question for our positivity segment. Do you have any, I mean, there have been some already in the conversation, but do you have any inspirational or uplifting stories? Inspirational story? You, you do inspire people. You know, I'm going to make it personal, and since I already talked about my father, and and this might be cliche and boring, but again, I'm a good little Asian boy, so like, (laughs) we're very, you know, Confucian value, like very all about the parents and and that kind of thing. And so I love my parents. Well, right. So some some people are going to think, oh, this is old hat, but like, their story always always inspires me in terms of like, they grew up in, I mean... If you're of that generation and you're in Asia, in, in their case, Taiwan, like you are, uh, they're from China, but they lived in, you know, Taiwan. Is, there was a war. There was all kinds of stuff. They went through all kinds of stuff, right? They grew up in abject poverty. They get an education. They come to America. They don't speak the language, right? You know, and, and, and they make a life, right? Yeah. And, and my father becomes an engineer for, you know, uh, uh, Moog, which like, or Honeywell, which, 
makes you know Air airplanes. Units well, <laughs> <laughs> right? They yeah. kept America cool. It, no, right? yeah. <laughs> keep America cool. No, they, no, he made know you that. know he okay. made defense weapons for America. He made America safe. Okay, so yeah. you feel me? He 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 helped the space shuttle go up. My mom wow. be, it was a social worker for the Orange County, right? Became a you know led teams of social workers, trained people, it was helping kids like. Yeah. And, and then they obviously had to go through a lot of, this is America, you know. I think we know what that means, and you're an immigrant, like that story. Like it was a different time of, for them, and, too. And it's a different time. And But yeah, so when I'm feeling sorry for myself, I think about my parents, and I'm yeah. like, man, you know, the stuff that they did. So I have no, for, for me, this is kind of what I carry around. It's like I kind of have very few excuses yeah. to, to, to quit because, like, they didn't, so... That's that. Family's important, and, and to me, especially, and to you, obviously, but, um, you know, not to everyone. Everyone's situation is different, right. and that's, you know, that's one of the things where I'm just grateful that I do have the family unit that I do. But I'm sure you could be argued on the other side. Those people would tell you, well, you know what? I get to pick my family. Oh, that's true. You know? I actually, I actually heard some one funny thing was uh, one actor on a shoot on a commercial. It's so funny. He actually complained jokingly that his family was too good to him. And uh, I was like, sometimes as actors, sometimes yeah. I thought that too, where I'm like, deep down, I'm like, man, I don't have enough like personal trauma to really. To get, dig, yeah, I dig, need to draw to on get. that. My life's been too golden. Exactly. Things have been too chill. Yeah. Right? It's funny you say that though, because I felt like personally, when I look back, the more experiences I had, um, the older I get, the better I become at it because you you do have more to draw on, more scenarios are real, but you know, um, there's one of those things. I'm I'm a I'm a huge what's his face? Is it Lawrence Olivier or somebody? Lawrence Olivier. Somebody uh, said try acting, my dear boy. But, yes, that was Lawrence Olivier. Yeah, I'm a you big know? fan of that. If you can't get there in it, your real life, like yeah. it's acting. You use your imagination. I you know? I believe I'm trying. I think it might have been my dear. Good catch. <laughs> that, Hire did I get him. Did I you get see it? those ninja skills? Oh my God! <laughs> Goodbye, fly. No, Done. continue. Sorry, take it back. Take it back. <laughs> no, I love yeah. that moment. Like it's fine. Um, it was fantastic. Uh, it's all about yeah, living in the moment and yeah. you know, we like sincerity. You know, that was one of the things too, though, about the cliches and people are like want to roll their eyes, whatever. But when you're sincere, the people who get it, you know, they can't help but be drawn to sincerity. I, I agree. Yeah. You know, but my thing is I, I either I'm a, an idealist or I'm so egotistical that I want everyone to be drawn in. <laughs> I don't, I don't it's think... It's not enough that people who love the sincerity like it. I need all the haters to like it, too. Look, at the end of the day, though, you know, you, you got to go with the people that are your tribe, right? And that you know you got love. And honestly, there's always going to be haters. Always. Oh, my gosh. I I found that. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but but you can't focus on it. And I, right. I, whether if it's something online, I ignore it and don't engage. Or, you know, I'll just say, ha-ha, LOL. You know, like, whatever. Like, brush it off and, you know. Well, one of the things I'm, I'm starting to experiment more with, especially for acting, is, like, you talk about, uh, you know, sincerity. Mm. But also, going back to the haters, it's like, Embracing your own personal faults and the imperfections yeah. in your performance. Yeah. Because that makes you alive. That makes you you. Because if, if, and I've done this in auditions, I try to make it perfect. Yeah. Whatever perfect is. Right. And then it, it just exist. looks, yeah. And then it just looks generic because you're not taking a risk. You're not yeah. being imperfect. We're just more good advice. Right. So, Sometimes it's good to yeah. to do the flubs, you know, yeah. or the whatever, the ticks that you think are not cool. Like maybe somebody likes that. Or maybe that's the thing that gets you not hired. You'll never know. That's you, the beauty of this wacky know, business. Right? You just keep you keep going because <laughs> exactly. like you said before, you never know what's around the corner. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, one, one of my favorite acting teachers in LA, um, Margie Haber, she, uh -huh. she, she said that. She's like, you know what? You're, you're going to get hired for what you bring to the role. Yep. Not what's on the paper, mm -hmm. what you do. Mm -hmm. Because no one is you except you. Mm -hmm. I agree. So, dude, this has been amazing. Like, so much inspiration, all the positivity. So, we should move along, continue on this train, and move into our next segment of Charity. 
So, this is an opportunity where you will play our game 50-50, so you'll have 50 seconds to earn $50 for a charity of your choice. Which charity are you playing for? Operation Smile. Yes. It's a great organization that goes around the world providing uh, free surgeries to children and babies who are from developing countries who are born with uh, facial deformities. Uh, because oftentimes these children won't get the treatment that they require and then they will be ostracized in yeah. society or yeah. they just have a hard life. So as an actor, you know, who, we concentrate on the face a lot and so I just thought that really spoke to me. Yeah. And give these other kids this opportunity, so. I love that, man. Well. Uh, so we're going to lean into the Mr. Negative mm. uh, conversation a little more. Yeah. So I am going to show you five negative images of actors. Oh, okay. All right? So because of the game format, you'll have roughly 10 seconds to identify each one. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Um, I'll tell you if you get it right or wrong, yeah. and then I'll pass you the next one. Okay. So the clock won't start until I pass you the first card. Okay. Are you ready? I am ready. Awesome. Can I get 50 seconds on the clock somewhere? <laughs> Okay, here we go, sir. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's harder than you think, isn't it? Yes, yes. It's if you, much if you harder. want to pass, I'll give you the next one oh. and, and you can uh, just collect them and go through them if you oh. have time. Oh. Pass, give me this one. Oh, 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 come on. Oh, come on. No. Is that Joe Pesci? No, that's no. Joe Pesci. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Danny DeVito? No. no. Danny. I love where you're going with this. Oh. Oh, pass, give me pass, a shot. Okay, next one. <laughs> oh, that's obviously me. Hey, oh, yeah. it's you. Ding, I ding, know ding. my headshot anywhere, yes. Oh, my gosh. I'm so terrible at this game. It's harder than you oh, think. Try it at home. Gosh. Oh, my gosh. Ah, pass. Yeah, pass. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is Barry Pepper. Who is no. This? Is this you? That's me. Oh, ding, ding, ding. Oh, All right. Oh, you got two, sir. <laughs> You got two. That's a $20 oh donation gosh. to Operation okay, Smile awesome. in honor of Mr. Steve. I'll throw in another 30 just to make it 50. Okay, there you go. I did not do a great Very job gracious and generous of you. Um, it was a hard game. Yeah. So, Do we know who they are? Uh, I'll show you. Uh, your yeah. first one was yeah. Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise, I see it now. It's hard, yeah. I and see you'll, it. You'll see, once you hear it, you see it, but yeah. it's hard. Yeah. This is Denzel Washington. I've worked with Denzel twice. Okay. You know? Denzel. You know it's Denzel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and How vain. Then, I knew me. Good yeah, boy. and me. Thank yeah, you. Uh, yeah. And then that is Selma Hayek. Selma. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. It's hard. You, you got me. these two. You got those two. So good. Oh. I love how you're like, oh, uh, Barry Pepper? No, wait. This, <laughs> is, this is you. Yeah. This is you. Awesome. Wait, you did a great job. Oh, man. thank not you. A, not an easy thank game. You. Oh, um, my goodness. But... Having said that, uh, you're all about fun. That was fun to watch you do that, and I think we should have a little more fun together. So we are going to move on to our next segment, which is activity. And I thought it would be nice to do something together that kind of ties in some of the, the career aspects of yours that we've talked about. So I thought it would be fun if we played out a little scene, not you and me necessarily, but with the assistance of six inch figures, because let's be honest, we got to talk about that. Mr. Negative getting his six-inch oh, figure next year. You were the first to tell me that that was going to come out. Oh, I did. Yes. I sent you. Yep, that's right. And then it came out. Yeah. And then I was like, I, I was, I thought you were just talking no. rumors, but yeah, this is amazing. it's real. You are immortalized in six-inch. It's form. my face, yeah, man. Oh, it's the face. It's, it's incredible. The face. It's, look, it is incredible. I, I'm blown away. Yeah. I, I bought like five sets. Out that's, a, that's a bucket list for me. <laughs> exactly. I'm like an action yeah, figure man. of myself. So you it's got surreal. It, yep. yep. But uh, yeah, so um, we're going to have our awesome uh, PA, Brian. He's going to pass us off. So uh, he's going to be Red Hood since oh. he's Red Hood in the upcoming game. And uh, I'm going to be Spider-Man since he was your nemesis in Very the video cool. game. But I think, we, cool. I think we really just need to like have fun with this okay. and, and think back to like when we were kids. Oh. Love this life. Being a teenager with superpowers. Yeah. <clears throat> whoa. Red Hood, wait. What are you doing here? What are you doing in my town, punk? Whoa, whoa, your town? You better DC your way out of here. You better MC you know what I'm talking about. You know? I challenge you to a dance-off. Oh, you're so flexible. Do you do yoga? Every day with Aunt May, that is, I can that rhyme, is. and that sounds really bizarre. <laughs> Don't tell anybody that she's my Aunt May. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, kid. All I know is I don't like crime. You see any crime happening? 
Uh, no, but I sense something. I'm tingling. See ya. That was odd. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. This has been awesome, man. Uh, I thank you so much for coming here. But before I let you go, yes. we want you to do a little publicity and tell us all what you are working on now, Ooh. what's coming up, like oh, something oh. that we may have missed that you think is worth revisiting. Sure. In October of 2022, this year, Early Gotham Knights. Yeah, Gotham Knights comes out. I play Red Hood, AKA, yeah. 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 Uh, so that'll be fun. And then this is a little secret project. Ooh. that I'm on, but it rhymes with rar fars. <laughs> it's one of the TV shows. Okay. And okay. I'm uh I'm doing a little I'm doing a little role in that for a couple episodes. I, yeah. I don't know if I'm breaking NDA, but I'm doing it because whatever. Let's we'll find out before we air this and uh we'll exactly. make sure we Protect your butt. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Or, I mean, that's uh, yeah. plenty good. Those are and great. And then, like I said, single, ready to mingle. Let's go. Hang oh, out. hey, yo. <laughs> so, working actor, two good projects, <laughs> right. and he's working on. That's right. Married life. Or that's no? right. I'm or just working on, on a just, significant uh, other. Uh, yeah, love. Let's. That, that's it. <laughs> love. That's what it's all about, yeah, baby. That's all. That's all. Thanks again, Steve. And now that brings us to our last segment, which is audience participation. So this is where we, one, thank you for watching. Uh, we ask that you like, subscribe, comment, share the video if you want. And if you would like us to send you a little prize, why don't you leave a comment telling us how you think our guest today inspired my wardrobe? And we'll go through all the correct answers and we will announce the winner before next week's episode. So thanks again, and we will see you next Tuesday.